Oh dear, this is not what I thought we would be talking about at any point in this guy's career, to be honest. Today we're going over to what Elliot Friedman said on the recent edition of the 32 Thoughts podcast in regards to the New York Islanders and whether or not there could be a trade brewing with the Calgary Flames. Now, the Flames have been a very hot topic, quite literally and figuratively when it comes to trade conversations the past few days because their defensemen have been on the market. Everybody's talking about Chris Tanev. Everybody's talking about Nikita Zadorov. We're making videos about all the teams that are getting linked to these two guys and going over whatever returns could be necessary to facilitate some sort of a move. However, Today, we're taking this conversation onto the island and taking a look at what exactly it is the Calgary Flames apparently would want from the New York Islanders, assuming, of course, what Elliot Friedman is saying here is true, that the Islanders would be interested in getting their toes wet too. They're also jumping deep into this conversation of Calgary Flames defenseman trade talk. And it all starts off of what was said on 32 Thoughts. Now, I'm going to leave a link in the description if you want to go ahead ahead and listen to the podcast. It's all there on the show. But to help us out, we're also going to go over on to Spectre's Hockey because their November 18th edition of the article has a pretty good written summary as to what it is that Elliot Friedman says regarding the Islanders and regarding the Flames. Let's take a look at what the article goes out there and reads. Is a trade coming for the New York Islanders? In his latest 32 Thoughts podcast, Elliot Friedman said he believes Islanders GM Lou Lamorello is asking around to see if he can make some help for his struggling club. Friedman believes that Lamorello is on the hunt for a scoring forward. He also thinks the Isles GM could be in on some of the defensemen on the Calgary Flames, like Nikita Zadorov, Noah Hannafin, or Chris Tanev. One player who could be a trade ship for the Islanders is Oliver Wallstrom. Friedman thinks the 23-year-old winger might welcome a move if he won't get an opportunity with the Isles. He thinks the Flames would be interested in acquiring him since they acquired Igor Sharangovich during the summer. Now pause before we continue on with that train of thought. We did talk about this in the Chris Tanev Niels Hoaglander video, but when it comes to what the Flames are apparently asking in these trade negotiations for one of their defensemen, they want exactly what it is that Elliot Friedman is labeling out here. Guys that are younger, that can slot into the lineup right away, and who still have significant value long term. This is the mold, kind of. It's why we talked about Tanev and Hoaglander, because Hoaglander is also a young guy. He's a pretty versatile forward at the NHL level already. And if the Islanders really have an extra guy or two that is in that age range, that particular profile is most likely what the Calgary Flames would be interested in. This is why when you take a look at Oliver Wallstrom and you acknowledge what his profile looks like, things get really interesting really quickly. And I say this mostly as a Homer fan of the guy because Oliver Wallstrom, if you remember, back in 2018 when he was drafted, this was the guy that I wanted the Vancouver Canucks to take with their seventh overall pick. Like we made videos literally five years ago talking about this draft, talking about the Darlene, Svechnikovs, Adinas, the Kachuks, the Hugheses, the Boquists, and I said, yeah, Oliver Wallstrom is my guy. Assuming all those guys that we talked about earlier are going to be taken by the time Vancouver Vancouver selects at number 7th overall. I want Oliver Wallstrom because if you talk about Brock Besser, the right wing, American right-handed sniper goal scorer, Wallstrom could have been the same thing. I was super optimistic when it came to evaluating Wallstrom's game. And for the most part, he's been pretty alright. Maybe not to the same magnitude that I thought he'd be able to be, but after getting taken 11th overall by the New York Islanders in 2018, he's done more or less what a lot of people thought he'd be able to do. He's 23 years old, 6'2", 205, right-handed guy signed till the end of 23-24 on a sub-$1 million deal. And admittedly, it's taken Wallstrom a while to really break out in the ways that we thought he could, but he's been sort of there. His best season was 2021-2022, wherein he grabbed 24 points in 73 games played. Last year, he suffered from injuries, had 16 points in 35 games, and this year, he's only got 2 points in 11. I mean, he had the shootout winner yesterday against the Calgary Flames and Jacob Markstrom, so there you go, Elliot Friedman literally taking a page out of what's going on in the real NHL to see whether or not the Calgary Flames would evaluate a guy that just defeated them in the shootout. 
but he's got a goal, one assist, he's on pace for about 14 points in 76 games played, not a great number, but of course, you have to acknowledge here that the guy hasn't really been given the best opportunity to be a number one forward on this Islanders team. Not saying that he deserves that, not saying that it's owed to him, but just saying that it hasn't happened yet, which is why if you wanted to evaluate his overall productivity from what he's presented so far, it may not be all too fair in comparison as to what his skill set actually is. So if you're a Calgary Flames fan, and this is the guy that you're targeting, Honestly, I'd probably go out there and say that he's got more to show for than what his numbers have indicated so far. He has been a very productive scorer throughout the past few years before the NHL. His NTDP days were really good. Sure, his Boston College days, you could probably hope for more numbers than 19 points in 36 games played, but this guy was playing in an era before all of these 18-year-old kids went out there and started dominating the NCAA like we're seeing with Macklin Celebrini, even with the... Luke Hughes's of the world, the Lane Hudson's, and then of course the Adam Fantilli's from last year. Different era, admittedly, even though it was only five years ago. But if we go back over to the Spectre's hockey piece, there is indeed yet another analysis provided that is cited from a New York Post article. Ethan Sears doubts that a trade is coming for the Islanders. With the exceptions of Oliver Wallstrom and Jean-Gabriel Peugeot, there are not many Islanders who seem movable right now, he writes. He also noted that a limited number of teams are looking to offload talent. If the Islanders fail to improve, Sears thinks a coaching change might be in order. And we could talk a little bit more about that, but um, yeah, it kind of steers away from the conversation we were having initially. When it comes to Oliver Wallstrom, I don't want to make it seem like this guy is going to become the next best thing. Like, Brock Besser is one of the top goal scorers in the NHL. I always compared the two stylistically because I thought there were a lot of similarities. I'm not saying that Oliver Wallstrom is going to be a guy who gets 14 goals in 16 games next season or whatever, but... Just that he is in a position where you could very much argue that he hasn't been given the best opportunity so far. And as a result, I'm not going to go out there and say that he's going to request a trade or anything, but that he is movable, that he may be expendable, and that if the Calgary Flames are looking to offload one of these guys on D, Oliver Wallstrom is as good of a catch as any when it comes to getting a young guy who can slot into your lineup and who probably has more to improve on. And hey, maybe if you get Wallstrom, he could teach Jacob Markstrom how to stop a shot or two in the shootout, right? Okay, that was kind of a low blow. But either way, if you're a fan of the New York Islanders, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. How do you feel about the idea of acquiring one of Tanev or Zadorov and using Oliver Wallstrom as a trade piece in that transaction? It doesn't really appear like Lou Lamorello would be interested in trading a young guy away like Wallstrom for any draft capital or any other prospects. It seems more so like Lou has his plan, he has his team, he wants to remain competitive now. That's why he's kept a lot of these guys around. Around. And so if it's a Wallstrom for Tanev or Zadorov deal, how are your thoughts about that? If you're a fan of any other NHL team, what are your thoughts on the idea of Oliver Wallstrom being expendable because he hasn't really been given the best shot? And what are your thoughts on him as a prospect and player in general? I remember being super high on this guy. He could have been an elite first line talent. I was expecting by this point in time at 23 years old for Wallstrom to be able to be a 40, 45, 50 point guy at this point. He's definitely not that right now, but how much of that is chalked up due to the opportunity? How much of that is chalked up due to his overall skill set in general? And do you think there really is more for him to show for at the top level in the world? Do you think the Calgary Flames, upon getting a guy like Oliver Wallstrom, could be in the position to give him that spotlight? This is another former first rounder who is on the trade block, but let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. How do you feel about Wallstrom entering this mix? I hope you enjoyed this video, Ash Rolls 99, and bye.